We are here with my friend, owner and mastermind behind one of our favorite lure brands and one of your favorite lure brands, Tekel Lures. And we are unveiling the brand new Max Squeaker Buzzbait. So I am super stoked to pick Hideki's brain on what exactly is this and what's in store for us. If you guys are fans of Buzzbait fishing, you are not going to want to miss this conversation. Come along, let's have some fun. All right, welcome back my friends. I've been with the Hookup Tackle with the man himself, Hideki Maeda from the one and only Tekel. Thank you for thank you for coming back. Welcome back to our store. Sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm very I'm very happy to come back here. Yes, yeah. It's been I thought it was only we've seen each other a lot, so I didn't think it had been that long since you've been in the store. Yeah, but it's well. actually been a couple of years since you've <laughs> been since you've been back here in Arizona. So, yeah. welcome back. Congratulations, another new bait. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited about this one. Uh, this is the Max Squeaker, or Max Squeaker. Yeah. There we go. Talk to me about the Max Squeaker. Tell me what this is, what went into it. Here, I'll, I'll give you one that's out of, out of the package so we can talk about this. Talk to us about this, because I'm a huge Buzzbait fan. I was super stoked when I heard this was happening. So explain okay. to the people what this is. Yeah. Actually, some people, especially the older kind of, you know, the long experienced fishermen know about this. Uh, I used to make this in a, under a different brand and uh, I just quit to make it. And uh, I just, I, I have a bunch enough for my personal use. So I just, I don't, uh, I have no idea to remake back. But uh, and, uh, three years ago, uh, Kenta uh, called me, uh, he, he messaged me and uh, he wanna uh, this one. He tried to get on the eBay, but still he couldn't find that one. So I just gave him a couple, my personal one. And uh, luckily, um, I'm very happy uh, to hear that he won uh, James River Bassmaster Open on it. After that, uh, many another friends. Hey, why, why not uh, only Kenta? I give me, uh, give me one couple. So, but I do not have enough to give every single friend. So, uh, finally, I give, I decide to remake back for the Tekel brand, other the Tekel brands. So, I'm very happy. The many people, even when I go to the the, the Bassmaster Classic uh, uh, last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, already uh, many guys uh, uh, see me, uh, see my Instagram and uh, posted on this, but so many guys come to me and uh, excited, hey, when, when that's coming up, I'm available, you know, how can I get, like, uh, right. uh, where, where can I get, like, so I was very happy that everybody knows about this one, so I'm very proud of myself. Well, you can, you can keep your friends now, mm -hmm. now you'll have enough to give to all your, mm -hmm. to all your friends, so. Uh, I'm super stoked for this. It's really cool to hear, you know, that that Kent, I, anything Kent is a fan of, I become a fan of because I value his opinion mm -hmm. a lot. So super cool to hear that it was brought back out of need, mm -hmm. right? Because we needed it. So there's a lot of this community that's going to remember back to the days where this, like, because this used to be a staple in my arsenal too until it went away. But there's a lot of people that are new to this and aren't going to be familiar with this bait. So can you break this down and tell me what makes the Max Squeaker different? Why, mm -hmm. why is this a Tekel okay. mm -hmm. bait? Okay. okay. Yeah. I can explain why I made it. Okay. Because a uh, long time ago, I fished the 
tournament, but in the uh, in the U.S. Uh, many times in at the Kwangra side, and mostly I f first couple you know couple first years like uh, ten years like I fish the Delta or mostly in the West Coast, Clear Lake, whatever, and uh, always Delta is my favorite my favorite water to fish. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot, I also learned the frogging from the Delta. And uh, every time when I, I had a chance to throw the buzz bait in the Delta, I, I catch a lot of grass on the moss and wasting time to take out every single cast. But uh, the Kwangara, sometimes we have a few chance to get a bites. So every I do not like lose the, any chance. So I'm thinking about we need the I need the weedless buzz bait. This is the first thing I want to try something new buzz bait. Okay. And uh, I first thing I found it. Uh, most of the buzz bait has the hole from here to here and here. Yep. And uh, buzz bait has the bibet. Al aluminum rivet on the back of the end, yep, like this. Yep. So, not this one, but right. The... So normally they would have a rivet yes. on the back here. Yes. There'd be a hole on the blade, and a hole on the blade, and then usually like a rivet kind of attaching the blade back yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like a, like this one. Yeah. So this is a different concept. There's only the single hole, no rivet, no rear hole. Yeah. Okay. And uh, most of the time we tangles the most in the part of this back end. Right, to... it's almost like getting it in a prop. It's just yes. wrapping around there and you gotta yeah, keep pulling out. Yeah, I couldn't take out. So I'm thinking, if I remove the rivet in the back end, no moss in, in, you know, we don't catch any moss on the back end. So I'm thinking about maybe to, you know, rivet or something to put in the middle of the blade. Yep. This is uh, why I made this. And then... So it's attached here. So yes. where most buzz baits are going to have a rivet on the back holding it on this wire, you're using this unique attachment here in the middle of the blade. It eliminates the grass from snagging mm -hmm. back there. Mm -hmm. Okay, smart. Yeah. And uh, one more thing. Some people some people talk about the the... Also, this part sometimes catches the grass and the moss, you know, this part. Yep. So some brand put something like kind a of cone, cone or, or whatever. Yep. But yep. I also try, but uh, it doesn't help because most of the time to catch the grass here, most, you know, it, it come from first, we catch a piece of the grass or something in in the front of this one. Yep. And then it bend. Yep. And the, the blade is spinning yep. to it. So if I put something on the on the front, also take out it's it taking more time to right. take it. Yep. So my opinion, I prefer nothing in the front of the, the blade. So okay. even you cut the grass, catch the grass or whatever just it just pops right yeah just because it's up. not in not, between no, two pieces nothing nothing okay. so this is uh my answer you okay know, for the you know kind of grassy lake okay this is very good idea i think yeah. okay yeah yeah i've never ever found any <laughs> another weedless buzz bait yes. in the market right one more thing okay um most of the buzz bait lover the fishermen uh, think about the kind of squeaky sound, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like like a yeah. We all want that squeak, squeak on the blade. Yeah, right, right. I mean, sometimes we'll drive with it out our window, uh -huh. or you know, just have that blade yes, go enough yes. until it gets real squeaky. Yeah, so it's getting more squeakier yep. or something. But for this one, please do not like this one. Okay, go outside. It's, okay, you know, if you get get out from the package. Yep. Already the perfect squeaky, yeah, Max, maximum squeak sound. Got it. So it's yeah. ready. So right out of the package, I take this thing out, and it's ready. It's ready to, yes. to squeak already. I can yeah. I can hear it even without the water. I can hear the squeak. Yeah. So do it. not. Yep. Go that. Okay. We don't need to do that. Yes. Okay. Or it's getting what? <laughs> okay. 
Understood. So just take it out of the package yeah. and throw it. Okay. You know why? I can do that. Because most of the, you know, the, the squeak sound come from the kind of resistance or max, you know, kind of like, a, how to say that. It's kind of the rubbing, rubbing right, of, yes, that, rubbing. of that rivet in that uh -huh. back blade, and yes, they're just kind yes, of rubbing like yes, this. Yeah. Yes. So how have you created squeak yeah. then? So most of the buzz bait, regular buzz bait, the sound, squeak sound, come from the the, the rivet, and the, yeah, it's like, that's what I'm talking. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a rubbing from the, the face of the blade and uh, rivet. Yep. But this one, it's hard to see, but only just only two points. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole of the bread has a kind of square front, right? Yep. Square. Yep. And uh, the rivet of this, the brass rivet, is touching only one and two. Yep. Only two point. Yep. So the this square hole pushing backward when it's spinning yep. and the rivet is pushed with back. So only the two points scratching, not rubbing more like a scratch or yep. like a threading. So that's why it make more squeaker sound. But when you do like in a- in Holding a, it out holding the window. Holding yep. in a window. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm driving in a <laughs> nice, you know, right handle with uh, in uh, Japan, so right. I just saw it like this, yeah. but uh, right. in the American side. We're out over guess, here, yeah. right. Yeah. So, too much, uh, when you do this in the uh, in air, yeah. fast, you know, very fast spin, yep. it's too much would groove it, and it, that, that square yep. is going to round. Understood. Yes. Okay. So no need or don't do that. <laughs> okay. Understood. CJ, could you see that from the camera? Yeah, a little bit. Let me see it so, again. So just to make sure you guys can see it. So if you look at the hole in this blade right here, you can see it's kind of triangular up top here. Well, you see how it kind of, when once it gets to that corner and it squares off, it sits right on that rivet. So just these two little points right here on both sides are making contact with that rivet and that's creating the squeak so or that's kind of rubbing scratching squeaking yes yeah smart even when i use it so still kind of scratch uh, scratching yep so i made the braid it's a um, way thicker than the regular braid okay so it's kind of hit you know heavy heavy duty, heavy blade. duty yep. blade yep so it's kind of more torquey. Yep. But still, if you use a lot, you know, every day for you know hundred days, maybe it's getting more, <laughs> you know, getting. I loud. would expect if I'm using a buzz bait for a hundred days, it's gonna slowly mm -hmm. start to, slowly start to mm -hmm. wear down. Yeah. So I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, even that one. Yeah. The the brass. This part, yep. it's, it's technically, this is not the rivet, right? But right. Uh, kind of part of what I call the rivet. Uh, this one was uh, threaded, what to say. Yeah, you said it right. Threaded. And this is another unique feature of this, so of this it, buzz bait. So we can replace the blade. blade. Yeah, so if you find that magical buzz bait that just has like the mojo, mm -hmm. but your blade starts wearing, if you guys look closely, most buzz baits, this back wire is just a solid wire all the way to the rivet. This one is actually threaded. So can you hear it scratching, CJ? Mm -hmm. So it actually, this piece actually just can thread on there. So you can unthread, you can see how that's starting to come down. So if you wanted to, you can, you know, take that blade off, put a new blade on, re-thread it on there, uh, if you have multiple buzz baits, like let's say you have a black one and you have a bluegill one and you wanted the gold blade on the black one and the black blade on the bluegill, you could take them off, swap the blades, change yes. the colors. So it's kind of a really unique system if you have multiple baits that you can, you have that ability because with most buzz baits, once that rivet starts wearing out, the blade's done and you know, you're kind of done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's good thinking.
Talk to me about, let's just finish the design. So you've got this little knocker mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So just designed to create. Yes. So, things. yeah, actually I was, uh, used to be, I I really like to use the Boogerman buzz bait. I remember the Boogerman. Yeah, so yeah. I, I use Boogerman. So I'm yeah. just uh, impressed about that. Super design. loud, mm -hmm. if you guys aren't familiar. It used to be a big buzz bait, lots of sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that Boogerman has a similar, like hitting the head. So, but uh, if, when you use it, the head is more, the you know, paint is come off and uh, it's more getting Grooved, 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 grooved. Yep. So I just put the brass ball on the head. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Sometimes I like to make this bread hit every single time, but sometimes I just a little just, open it okay. without uh, kind of knocking okay. sound. Okay. So it depends on the fisherman. So we can choose if we want more sound, we just have it hit that every time it mm -hmm. goes. If we want less sound, we just flex it a little bit mm -hmm. and then we can move it without it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What I've always liked about this is the distance mm -hmm. and the openness of this buzz bait. So many buzz baits, by the time the wire comes high and the blade is back, there's not a lot of gap. Mm -hmm. But what I've always loved about this is that when they eat it, it's pretty much all mm -hmm. gap. Why did you design this longer head and the longer hook? Was it just solely for that to create more gap? Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Even this, sometimes I put extra trailer hook on on this one. Yeah. But uh, I just just told you that mostly I like the grass lakes in yep. like a delta or yep. even a lake beaver. There's a lot of grass, so yep. I do not like to put the extra hook on you know trailer hook on that back one. So I just want to make the hook a little you know as backward as yep. possible. Yep. So this is the design I did, I do. Now we were talking yesterday, this is a hand tied skirt on there, mm -hmm. right? And it's trimmed, so it's hand tied and trimmed. We were talking yesterday about how it's really popular right now with buzz baits to kind of take the skirt mm -hmm. off and just put like a, I don't know, a K-Tech or some mm -hmm. kind of swim bait or something, yeah, you know, a toad. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Or do you personally, or do you like, still like this old school skirt material i'm just i'm curious yeah yeah even yeah i saw the pictures uh, kenta use kenta was uh, using the, the with uh, kind of honey toad types kind of you know the frog like a frog kind of flapper frog yes. yep yeah so he didn't he take out the skirt yeah so but uh personally i'm still like to use this one but some people say it's uh, like a plastic big profile of the plastic is more easy to skipping under the dock or whatever. But yep. uh, when I see the spot for the skipping, yep. I can't stop uh, throwing the frog. <laughs> so Understood. So okay. if you can skip, you're throwing a frog. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I don't feel like skipping under, skipping the buzzbait in the bushes. So, right. So not so much chance, but Understood. I must run. I must okay. run. I okay. must try. Yeah. So one of the reasons why I go back and forth, I like to throw my buzz bait with just the skirt. But one of the challenges to most buzz baits is that they're hard to throw. They're longer, they're lopsided. So they have a tendency to just kind of waver in uh -huh. the wind. But this, this buzz bait casts really good. It's half an ounce, uh -huh. right? Yes. It's compact. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get a lot of that, you know, aimless drifting type casting uh, that you would on a traditional buzz bait. So uh, let's really quick, there's six colors, mm -hmm. right? So let's just run through them really quick and, and introduce them to everybody. So you have shad yes. in your hand. So just kind of a nice natural shad. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed the blades on these are more of a not quite a matte finish, but they're more of a muted Yeah, like a kind of hand brass one. Like, yes. So why do you like that instead of, like, you have a silver and I have a gold. Neither are super shiny. Yes. Um, I feel this kind of sand brass make more kind of squeaky sound. Okay. So I believe. Okay. That's why I make that no shining, no okay. smooth one. Yep. Okay. So, Shad, you just saw, this is bluegill. 
So nice, natural, and it's gonna come with the blade that you're seeing it on, but again, if you wanna flip and flop blades, you certainly can. There's a black black, mm -hmm. so black with the painted. There's also a black blue. And then there is a chartreuse white with a gold and a white with a silver. So six colors. These are uh, dropping right now. So just in time for buzzbait season, which, mm -hmm. is, uh, which is exciting. So Hideki, thank you very much for creating this, bringing it back, letting us all have a chance to put this in our arsenal again. I'm excited yeah, to use I'm it. Glad. I'm also excited and uh, I really love uh, someone fishing, catching the fish on my buzzer bait and posting on my Instagram. I, it's, it's my pleasure to see to, you know, home. This is why I keep making the baits. No, for, you know, uh, well, we need money so that we can drink beer, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So we need that. But yeah. you definitely, you love topwater fishing. Mm -hmm. And you love watching people have success with your baits. So if you guys are using anything tackle, and Hideki loves seeing weird fish caught on it too. So whatever fish you're catching, whether it's bass, uh, which is certainly the intended use, but if it's yellowtail or tuna or tilapia <laughs> it doesn't matter post it tag him he'd love he'd love to yeah, see it yeah i'm happy to see yeah so hideki thank you very much thank yeah. you for spending time with us uh congratulations on another great bait bringing to market look for those if you guys have any questions on the max squeaker drop it down below and either myself or hideki will get answers to you and have fun this buzz bait season we will see you guys again soon thanks hideki yeah all right peace out guys better